Good afternoon, everybody. How's it going? Happy Sunday. I uh, wanted to, uh, first let me say, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Margaret, and I am a wife, mother, grandmother, a lover of the Lord, or um, as I like to call him, Yahweh. And I wanted to get on here and share a little bit, and I have notes so that I don't lose where I'm at. So if I am looking down, that's why it's because I'm kind of referencing my notes so I don't ramble all over the place because I can do that sometimes. But anyway, um, I have heard that there's some talk about us and... Um, you know, that some people think that uh, we're in a cult or we've joined a cult or whatever. So I want to talk about um, how we got to where we are. I want to tell the story um, and see if that um, helps some people. Maybe there's some people out there that, you know, are too afraid to ask. So I'm going to kind of share a little bit with you guys um, how we got here. So, um, back in 2008, my husband, uh, D found a video on YouTube and it was called the Jay-Z deception. Um, he showed it to our family, um, mostly to make the children aware, um, as they were listening to secular music some at the time. Um, personally, we don't, my husband and I really don't listen to secular music too much. Um, most of the time, you know, we're listening to gospel or Christian or whatever. But anyway, at the time, our kids were listening to some secular music. So he brought this video to our attention, and we watched it. It was a documentary, and it basically just revealed how satanic the music industry is. And um, it introduced us for the first time to the word Illuminati. So... Um, I also was reminded while I was watching this of a video that my friend Tom Loxon introduced me uh, to probably back in the in the late 80s um, along the same lines, but it was um, strictly about rock music at the time. And it's funny how when you're in it, like you just kind of push stuff to the back of your mind and you don't really think about it. And, and so when I first was watching this Jay-Z deception, you know, I was kind of shocked a little bit and then shocked that I was shocked because you know if they were if the music industry or the rock music industry at that time was satanic and had you know satanic symbolism in their videos and stuff like that then why would I think that that just magically stopped so anyway um, I'm not sure if it's still on YouTube or not I didn't look it up before I decided to uh, get on here but if you get a chance to check it out please do so again it's called the Jay-Z deception um, so anyway, uh, we began to look in other, into other things as well, and I want to say I think that we started with uh, the JFK assassinations, um, assassination, I should say, um, which that led us down another rabbit hole uh, to uh, topics like MK Ultra, uh, Manchurian candidates. Um, and so, if you haven't researched these things, um, I encourage you to do so. Again, you can find, you can probably type that into search on YouTube and videos will fall, uh, will come up. Having said that, they are censoring a lot now on uh, YouTube and um, Google and all of that. So, you know, you may or may not find good quality stuff or whatever. You're going to see what they want you to see but you can try. Um, hey, Terry, thanks for watching. So um, after the uh, JFK assassination, once we researched that, then we really started falling, falling down the rabbit hole again with MK Ultra Manchurian candidates, which then led us to 9-11. And um, that was a really hard pill to swallow as it was the first event that we had actually lived through. So, um, it's hard to accept that you've been lied to, um, but in this case, it was very clear that we had been lied to, 
And um, if there had been any doubt, um, it was erased by Building 7 um, and the fact that it collapsed without having been hit by a plane. Uh, because, um, I, you know, obviously you hear people say, well, that, you know, this happened or that happened. But in reality, if any of the buildings were going to fall aside from the two that were hit by the planes, in my opinion, they would have been um, in closer proximity to Ground Zero. But that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. Um, again, you guys can <laughs> look into that. Um, but, but Building 7 for us was kind of like the clincher that there was something uh, bigger going on uh, than a terrorist attack. Um, and then following 9-11, you know, more of our rights were taken away. So uh, then we started having to, you know, be molested by TSA. But I digress. That's a whole other topic. So after this, um, my husband bought me a Kindle Fire for Christmas. And I have to tell you that I almost cried <laughs> from disappointment because I hate to read. Hey, Michaela. Um, I hate to read. And I had been given a prophetic word uh, from uh, Kevin Leal. Um, he was a prophet that came to our church at the time. And he said something about books and that there would be books in my life or something to that effect. And I just absolutely was like, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's eating bad pizza. Um, he's talking to the wrong person because I hate to read. So anyway, uh, long story short, my husband buys me Kindle Fire, and I came across a book in there called As the Days of Noah Were, and I read it. And I'm not sure why uh, that particular book popped out at me, um, but God knows, obviously, he had a plan. And so this book opened up a can of worms for us. Um, and, and this can of worms I really wasn't ready for because in reality, you know, hearing that the music industry or Hollywood, you know, they have their satanic Illuminati thing going on. Like that wasn't hard to believe. Um, you know, the JFK assassination, 9-11, none of those things were really extremely hard to believe. Or I'll say they didn't affect me in the same way as what I'm about to tell you. So, um, we'd seen all these other ways that we'd been lied to and came to terms with it, but now we had to look at sacred ground, which was our faith. Um, this book that I just mentioned only scratched the surface of some things, uh, but it also validated some questions. Um, I had already been asking, like I shared a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, was what does an egg laying rabbit have to do with the resurrection of Messiah when that's not even something that exists in nature. Um, so this led us to study church history. Um, and when I tell you it was hard, it was so hard. My religious spirit wanted to rise up on many occasions. Um, but I also wanted to know what the truth was. So um, I do want to say this before I go any further. I do not hate the church. Uh, in many ways, I'm very grateful for it because without it, I wouldn't be who I am today. Um, growing up, I was a part of what I now know was a cult. And although it's been a struggle at times to have to free my mind of some of the incorrect doctrine that we were taught, I'm still very thankful for it because it saved me from... A lot of things um, and what I mean by that is you know especially when you're you know young and a teenager or whatever you can get mixed up into stuff that derails your life or whatever and it just saved me from a lot of that so um, sorry my phone rang um, nothing that we ever learned from is a waste of time nothing nothing we ever learn from so uh, as the Bible says, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8, 28. So I also want to say um, that I believe most pastors and church leaders really do love people and they really want to help them. Uh, just like I said uh, last week about doctors, you know, they learned what they were taught. 
I'm sure never even imagining that it could be lies. I mean, like we go to school, you know, we learn what we're taught and we never consider the fact that what they're teaching us might not be the truth. Uh, but Satan has been running this planet and he hates us. He's been orchestrating a plan for a plan for thousands of years. So we are in the position of having to play catch up. So finally, I got to a point where I prayed to Yahweh. And this was my prayer verbatim. Father, please remove everything I've ever been taught and you teach me truth. And I had no idea then what I was really asking uh, and what it was going to require of me. Uh, he did what I asked, and we started with reading the Bible. And instead of reading what we believed, we believed what we read. Uh, one thing that I have said for many years is if Jesus, or Yeshua, as I call him, was Jewish, as we are told, then why doesn't our religion look more, quote unquote, Jewish? Um, and I do want to do a little education here. Um, Jewish has become its own religion, if you will. But initially, there were 12 tribes of Israel, and they were Yah's chosen people. Uh, but through rebellion, the nations were split in two. So that 10 tribes were on one side and two tribes were on the other. And Judah was one of the two tribes that made their way back to the land. And that is where the term Jew comes from. So anyway, as I said, we began to read the Bible and study the culture in which it was written. And for the first time in my life, the Bible came alive. And that was incredible to me because I can remember... Um, you know, when I was 11, 12, 13, whatever, a new, new Christian, you know, that I would, I would try to read the Bible and it was just black words on white paper and I didn't understand it. Um, and it made me very sad because, you know, growing up in church, you're told you need to read your Bible. You need to, you know, read your Bible, but I'm reading my Bible, but I don't really understand it. So for, for the first time in my life, the Bible came alive to me and, um, we're not affiliated with any church denomination, and no, we have not joined a cult. Uh, we simply read the, we read the Bible from cover to cover, and we are doing our best to live out what we see there. Uh, we're not trying to recruit members because that is not our job. Uh, we are called to be salt and light, and if people are drawn to that, um, then we minister as best we can, but revelation has to come from y'all. Uh, as I said before, uh, this has not been easy because it has required us to not only question what we believe and why we believe it, but to make changes and live out his commandments. Uh, and we do that not to be saved, but because we are saved. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And John 14, 21 says, He who has my commandments and keeps them is one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. It has been the greatest joy of my life to learn lessons directly from the Father. These are lessons that I will never forget. As I've shared before, um, the first Passover that we observed um, you're supposed to rid your house of yeast, which represents sin. And um, at the time, I lived in an 1,800 square foot house. And the thought of, you know, cleaning it, uh, every nook and cranny from top to bottom, was very overwhelming to me. And, um, you know, the thought kind of would come into my mind, oh, that room's probably not, you know, got any yeast in it or whatever. So, you know, that'll be fine or, you know, how we just kind of sweep it under the rug. And so it was just a, it was an amazing, tangible lesson that I learned directly from the Father simply by observing his feast of Passover. And um, then the next year, um, as I'm cleaning out my uh, cabinets, going through uh, the things that are there and looking at ingredients and finding things that had yeast in them, 
and discarding them, um, that was very hard to do because those things were pretty expensive. I mean, you know, we, um, I follow a ketogenic lifestyle. And so, you know, the things that I have to, to buy and eat are not cheap. And so, uh, it was very hard for me to do that. But in that, the lesson that sin is costly was very evident to me. So, um, yeah. So again, it's been the greatest joy of my life and I've learned lessons that I will never forget <clears throat> ever in my life. Never forget. And so, um, I'll go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me end here for now. I just wanted to share our journey with you. Um, if anyone has questions, feel, please feel free to send me a direct message. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and, um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to share, um, I just want to share our journey with you, share our hearts with you and, um, hope that you have been blessed by it. So I'll talk to you soon.